excited to see everybody's opinion on this one because there's some game changer things. Yeah. Gonna... You've got, uh, you know, so I think, can I summarize since you're going to kick off? Is that possible? Yes, go for it. Okay. All right. So, so one of the things that we're going to be talking about, which I'm pretty pumped about, is uh, adding call options inside a Teams meeting, right? So yeah. uh, Zoom kind of walked in the door with that option. Right, so you could you could basically, um, and it was really great for guest access. So people that were joining, they don't have to sign in. You just dial a phone number, right? Yeah. So now, uh, and Teams, in their defense, added it a while ago, but we're just kind of getting around to demoing what that looks like. So Kaylee's going to mm -hmm. talk about that and show you how easy it is to add uh, this to your Teams invites. Yeah. And she'll show you what it looks like. It's real simple. It's really just a license. Is all you're yeah. doing. And uh, that license enables that feature, and it takes about an hour for it to set up. Uh, mm -hmm. You can contact us and say, can, you, can I turn this on for a few users? And uh, we do it, and yeah. it's, it's really, really awesome. So, Shula, I'm taking a little, your bit, little bit of your thunder. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's, it's good. Um, I mean, I think with something that, that is really interesting, if you guys watched our Teams versus Zoom webinar, yeah. We compared these a while ago, and one of the things that I said, I was like, you know what? Zoom, in the end, has dial-in, and that's really important to some people. Right, so right. Stick with it. I, that, that's literally what I said. I mean, this was holding teams back. Right, you know? from the meeting perspective. From the meeting perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. we, were like, we were like, they don't have a dial-in, you know? So just go with Zoom for now. But Teams has dial-in now. They got so, it. And it works really well. Yeah. So um, I'm going to share my screen and show you guys what I'm talking about. So again, just like Bobby said before, when um, you guys want a you know, dial-in license, you just let us know and we can give it to you. And can you guys see my team yeah. screen right now? Yep, Perfect. So... When you have this license, you're going to get an email. And this email is going to give you a password that you'll need possibly if you, if you want to log in and start the meeting as a dial-in member, but you won't need that password for anything else other than that. But I say that to say everything from this point on is so easy. Like you, yeah. literally, you literally don't even have to think about it. I'm going to create a meeting and show you how easy this is. So I'm going to say test for dial-in. And I'm going to add Bobby to it. All right. And then, well, he's in a meeting right now. Darn. Didn't know that. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, I'm a so little I'm gonna, tied up. <laughs> so I'm going to create, this is the meeting that I just created, test for dial-in. And the numbers that are assigned are the same phone numbers across the globe. So they yes. have a, a network of phone numbers that are available to be utilized. Yeah. If you go to the admin portal, you can actually see some like right. the numbers. It's like, it's like a huge list of them from yeah. different places. But um, I do not use usually the Outlook app, so I don't ever really create teams meetings um, i can show yeah. that after you're done what it looks yeah, like yeah that'd be great so um when you first create it inside teams it won't show you the information i'm not really sure what the reasoning behind it is but um it is going to give you your own set of information your own link just like it normally would Rem i'm a lot of you guys remember us explaining this from the beginning where you could you know just click this link and go straight to the Microsoft meeting. And that's because it's its own personal link now, just like Zoom has to the meeting. And you can even copy this and paste it to somebody else right. and send that to them. So that's it's, just, a, it's, it's just a link. That's all. Yeah, it it's, ju it's just a link. So now what you have is underneath that your own personal dial, dial in phone number. And did I do anything different? No. Did I click anything extra? No. It just shows up there now. It's just an extra thing that you have now. So as soon as you, you know, set it up, you set it up, which we can set it up for you if you just ask us. I mean, that will show up for you and you now have that option for Teams meetings. 
I've got some more information about the licensing too. It's yeah, it, it's just it. eight dollars a user that that you turn this on for. Yeah. So so basically, you're just paying eight bucks for that person, right? To have this feature, you don't have to turn it on globally across the whole company. You just turn it on for one user or two users or however many users you want to do. They don't do anything. You are going through the normal process of inviting like you do, but all of a sudden that section underneath join shows up. It just, yes. it, they just insert it automatically. So you don't have to go through any pre-configuration, change mm -hmm. templates or anything. It just happens. Yes. And it's so helpful for, I mean, I would, I would really recommend getting this license for anybody who is constantly creating meetings. Right. Because it's very helpful for those people. That's what we did for our company. I have one. Bobby has one. Jackie has one. Like that kind of thing. And those people have that option. Now, some people have asked me, do you have to have the license to use the number? No. You have the license to be able to create that number for your meeting invites. Okay. So if I have the team's license that creates the dial-in and I invite all of you guys to a meeting, none of you will have to have that license to use the number. That, that was created by my license and then you can use it to dial in. So I hope that makes sense. I've gotten yeah. that question a couple of times and, and I understand that is a little bit confusing. Um, so let me show, let me show you from my end. Gonna, yes. I'd love mm -hmm. to see it from would when you, you're creating it. I would. would. You, all right, here we go. So I would love go. to. Here. Can you see my outlook? <clears throat> I can. Yeah. So sadly this week we're not waxing the cat, but that was from our last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, I do remember that meeting. For those of you that weren't in that meeting, I surprised Kaylee because I created a fake appointment called Wax the Cat and it blew her mind. <laughs> we're both cat people. No cats were harmed in the making of that video. <laughs> yep, um, so, the, uh, so here in this situation, you can, just, you can just sit here and just click the new meeting right here in the top because mm -hmm. they have a little quick launch. Um, and if you do that, it's going to bring up the dialog box and it immediately it drops the meeting information. Yeah, that's for whatever, so interesting. Yeah, for whatever reason, if you're doing it from the team, it's got to seed it first, and then you mm -hmm. go back in, and then it shows up. Now, when it when it sends it to them as an invite, it's already there, so mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about that not showing up. But for whatever reason, if you're doing it through the team's console, it doesn't show up immediately. But you notice it says the number's the same. Yeah. For Kaylee, that showed up as it as it does for me. Mm -hmm. Now, also, one of the things that's pretty cool is notice when I hover over, it has the conference ID already built in. So if someone yes. is call like if they get look at the calendar invite that you sent them on their phone, they can just click the link. It will dial it on their phone, and it will automatically use the 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 comma comma, and then mm -hmm. put the the conference number in for them to join. Yeah, so it's so it, easy. Yes, yeah, so makes it very convenient if they yes. wanted to do that. So. Let's talk about some scenarios, right, where this would be helpful, the dial-in option. Let's say that you have someone that you're wanting to join the meeting, and mm -hmm. you have stuff you want to present. This is where this is a great option. So they can join with their computer to see what you're presenting, but they can then dial in from their phone to be able to hear the conversation. This is so helpful. Yeah. So helpful. It's like when you're in a rut and you're like, oh my gosh, my desktop does not have you know, capability for me to communicate with them, but I still want to see everything that's happening in the meeting. And, you know, let's say you don't have headphones to plug in and you're not, you're not sure what to do. That's like, a that's a great option to, to use. Right. I mean, all you'll have to do though is, you know, mute your phone because you don't want to have the, <laughs> because right. there's like a weird feedback, but or mute, mute your computer. Like, oh, that's like, what I mean. Yeah. Mute your computer. Yeah. So if you, like, Ignore you may, what I said. Maybe you might have speakers on your computer, but you don't have yes. a microphone. Because so. I did and tried to use that, and I was like, whoa. It like, yeah. made this weird fee feedback. So you would have to mute and um, probably turn down your speaker phones if you want to use them, and then turn up your phone and make sure that that um, is on. And then you can talk and communicate and listen through your phone, but watch via your screen right yep. yes okay so that was a little bit um interesting now uh to put on the table so obviously i know a lot of you guys or some of you guys do use microsoft teams already for communication with your team 
Now, for those people, I would highly recommend using Teams meetings for all meetings now if you're creating meetings outside of your company or inside your company. Um, yeah. That's what we have tried to start doing more um, now. But if you're not using Teams, I understand if you still want to use Zoom, but they're very much in the sense of meetings, very on a, like on an even playing field except Teams does have a lot more options when it comes to notes and whiteboard. Like you were talking about, they have a new whiteboard feature where you can draw in your meetings. Like they take meetings to a whole nother level right now. So I would highly recommend using Teams meetings. Um, Did you want to show that? Especially if you have the dial-in feature. Yeah, let me show a little bit of that right now. And I think while you're kind of grabbing that to kind of dovetail off of that conversation that you just had, it's, yeah. it, you know, what they're doing is they're trying to get it lined up to be more friendly externally, Microsoft is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still not quite friendly on the guest access side yet, but it is considerably better. Mm -hmm. um, you do have links that are... Um, like when it comes in, you have a choice where the users can pick if they want to just log in as a guest, right? So that's that's there. Yeah. What would be really a great feature if you're listening, Microsoft, is give us <laughs> a dedicated link for guest access. That would be yes. that would that would put the bullet in that issue Done. because then you could just send it all to your guests. It doesn't request a sign in, and it would just let them log in. They don't have that yet. Hopefully someday they will. Um, so because of the Microsoft's very nature, it doesn't want to trust guests. Um, so you have to make sure you have some settings set correctly in Teams, mm -hmm. and there's some other things that you have to do in there. Once you do, it is pretty close to the guest friendliness and open arms attitude, but because Teams is more looking at it from a corporate security perspective, they really, they're like, eh, you know, I don't really want to trust yeah. people. So. Yeah. Which is great, but also if you want guests, it's a little bit hard to get right. around. But we can that. we can get around it. But and, you and just ask just, us to get around it. Yeah. And we can get it. <laughs> and we can get it set up to where it, you know you, when you go to send your invites out to guests, it it's pretty easy to do, but it's still just not quite as simple. But now you have all the features that Zoom right. has, plus a whole bunch more features that Zoom has. So I think that's really about the only little check little check on the yeah. zoom side of things everything else is all teams all the way down in my opinion yeah yeah so um what we we're talking about here this is a meeting it's our uh, double <laughs> all of a sudden it breaks through space and time um because we are streaming on both zoom and teams um so this is our teams meeting that we're also doing wow we are zooming you guys <laughs> so when you are in a meeting a team's meeting and you click on these little dots you can actually see something called meeting notes um, and in these meeting notes you can actually write to the team um, while you are in a meeting which is pretty cool and there's also a whiteboard feature so like let's create a new section so you could say test one and then I could have test two up here. And then I write something that I want to say, like, you know, hello. But my point is, this is pretty cool. You can highlight. It's basically like a little mini word in your notes. And you can just type away. And then it saves it afterwards. Um, so you can go back and look into it. This is really helpful for the people who are note takers in your meeting. Like, hey, can you write that down? All of it is right there, and you can even click on the notes to check on if they wrote that, you know, if, if they ended up putting that in, or what did I say about this? You know, you just go right, right, right back in. Really cool. Now, Zoom does have a whiteboard feature, but it's a little weird. It's only for the presenter, and um, it's not really the same kind of um, feel mm -hmm. and cohesive feel as this feels. Um, right. And so, and there is a whiteboard feature on here, but I don't have it set up yet, so you can't really see it, but I'm pretty sure. Bobby yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's on the other side. It's, it's on the same, yeah. So, um, that is just an example of how they're, they're coming up. Yeah, I, I was just on a call, and I looked, and I'm like, holy cow, where did that notes come from all of a sudden? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, they just added that. You know, um, we've always said this about Microsoft, you you better watch out because they're going to change. They're going to change stuff like 
yeah, but there's... it's for the it's for the better usually like yeah. you're you're always like dang i i wish i had that you know and then two days later it's like they were they were listening to you and it's there now you know what i'm saying They're that was like what you're saying <laughs> yeah.